Hi everyone, Derek Wright here from the Freedom Calling RV Show and today I'm going to give you five tips for traveling with dogs in an RV full time. So my wife and I actually had two dogs before we started this journey. Before we even decided that hey, we're going to live this full time lifestyle, we had two dogs and we knew that living with two dogs or traveling with two dogs would present some challenges. And these are some of the things that we've learned along the way. So we have two pretty big dogs. We have a full grown German Shepherd and we have a geriatric Rottweiler. So as you are probably guessing, the Rottweiler is a bit of a challenge. It's been, she's been a challenge everywhere we've went. She's been overseas, she's been everywhere with us. When we were military, we've had her for, for almost 13 years. And she's been, when I was active duty, she traveled overseas with us, she's been everywhere. And it's always been a tra challenge traveling with a Roddy in the U.S. because they're considered a dangerous breed or a vicious dog or something like that. Which is crazy because when you go to these other countries, it's perfectly fine. They're just a normal breed of dog. But when you come here, they're supposedly like a violent breed. It's probably because they've been overbred in the U.S. and all kinds of other things. But I want to go over some of the challenge, other than my dog being a vicious breed, I want to talk about some other challenges that we faced traveling full time in an RV across the country with our dogs. Um, here is tip one, number one that I'm going to give you. Out of all the tips, this is a pretty good one. Never start um, wondering about traveling with dogs in a Facebook group for RVers or people that travel full time in an RV. There are two questions you never want to ask about in these groups. One of them has to do with pets. Never ask a question about pets. And the other one has to do about your tow vehicle. Never ask a question about your tow vehicle. Because here's the thing. Everyone, and I mean everyone, is an expert in both these areas. And people can get darn right mean. And it's just ridiculous. Like I remember asking questions about, um, I was asking questions about my truck one time and now I know never to ask questions about my truck. Everyone has their opinion when it comes to what to tow your vehicle with and people will get absolutely crazy if you are not towing what they think you need to tow with. Um, and tip number two about the dogs, my wife has actually found controversy <laughs> in these groups asking about our dogs and how to travel with our dogs. Because whether you agree with it or not, when we travel, our dogs are more comfortable in our fifth wheel. They're more comfortable in our bed, laying down. We've put um, actually baby monitors on them and they just sleep the whole time. They lay down to sleep. Whereas if we put them in the truck, they'd be all crammed up. But if you say that in these groups, you're going to get a lot, a lot of experts and they're going to be hating on you. So tip number one, never ask a question about your pet or the well-being of your pet in one of these RV groups, uh, the full, like a full-time RV group. Just don't do it. I'd avoid it. Avoid the controversy. All right. You are a pet owner. You know best for your pet. All right. Simple Google searches will do. If you search in these groups, you're going to Put yourself on blast and people are going to hate on you. I'm just letting you know. It doesn't matter how, I'm letting you know there's no right answer. No matter how you travel with your dogs, someone is going to hate on you because of it. So save yourself the trouble. Don't ask in these groups. Tip number two. When we started traveling full time, we actually had portable crates. We had two portable crates, large portable crates that folded up and we got a lot of good use out of them. I will link those below this video. Um, if we had to leave for, for, if we were taking everyone out to a park or something like that that didn't allow dogs, we could keep our dogs in these crates. The reason why I keep my dogs in a crate is because my German Shepherd is very, he's a very loyal dog. Um, so loyal to the point where I think he'd probably come out of a window if he saw us leaving. He would probably jump out of a window or he'd probably scratch my RV apart trying to get to us. However, that portable crate, although it's canvas, he doesn't scratch to try to get out of the crate. But the RV, I'm, I'm super afraid that he would try to actually come out of a window or something to come get us. We were at our friend's farm one time. That They have a fenced-in farm, and their dogs uh, don't go out of the fence either. But we left one time. We left him outside, and we actually pulled out of the gate on the truck, and we saw him run into the fence. We saw him run into the gate. We saw him run into the fence. We're like, he can't get out. He's fine. We got about six miles down the road, and a stranger called us, 
and said, hey, are you missing a dog? And we're like, uh, you know, she described the dog and it was him. He had ran three miles on the road to find us. He, we were about six miles up the road and he had already gotten um, almost three miles chasing us down the road. I guess he was chasing the scent or something. So ever since then, I'm just a little worried that my dog will try to, you know, scratch up our RV. I've seen the horror stories. I've seen the videos or photos of these dogs that have scratched holes all the way through the door to get to their owner. And I don't want that to happen with my dog. So we travel with these um, portable crates. We used to actually, when we were going down the road, we used to have them in these crates on our bed. And we found out we, there was just no need for that. Um, but now all they do is they travel on our bed. We don't even put them in the crate anymore. It's just, it's a hassle for them. It's a hassle for us. And they are super comfortable just sprawled out on our bed when we are going down the road. They're used to it now and we're used to it as well. So we don't use those crates going down the road. We only use the crates, the portable crates, when um, they are in here. They have come in handy another time, which I'll save for another video. Um, we actually had an emergency visit to the hospital and those crates came in in uh, handy because all we did was put those crates in the back of the truck and they actually stayed in those crates overnight in the back of our truck while we were in the hospital. Another video, all right? So tip number three, um, an invisible fence. We actually have an invisible fence uh, e-collar. And the reason why we have that is because when we are staying some places that is not, they're not, maybe we are boondocking somewhere and maybe there are other dogs off in the distance when we're boondocking, what we'll do is we'll set up this invisible fence around our RV. First of all, I already told you our dog is super loyal. He alerts, so we like that. Uh, we like the fact that he alerts to stuff. He's not aggressive at all, but um, I think if anyone tried to do anything to my kids, he would get, he would probably get really aggressive. Um, but I like the fact that he alerts and he lets us know if someone's coming up on our camper. So if we're boondocking, then we will put that, uh, set that, that electric fence or that invisible fence, put his e-collar on, and he knows when he hears the the beeping, he knows he can't go any further. So. Um, we like that. So it gives him a perimeter to play in, to run around in, and we don't have to keep a constant eye on him, you know, 100% of the time. And we like that because now he, he still feels like he needs to do a job. So now he can, he can alert, he can still see things, and uh, he can still play and run around. You know, he's got a, an area to do that without actually putting up a fence everywhere we go. Tip number four. So the enemy of any RV is water and moisture. And that presented a challenge with us when we first started because we were always knocking over dog water. And then we found this thing right here, right? Looks kind of weird, right? This is a spill-proof bowl. Look, you can see the water in it, right? And I want to show you that this thing, it's like a magic trick, right? Can you see the water in there? You see the water? Now check this out. No water. This has probably been the number one thing that we've gotten for our dogs or the number one dog device that we've gotten since we started traveling full-time in an RV. This thing is awesome, all right? This is a spill-proof bowl, and I will link it down below. I think if you're traveling with a dog, then you gotta have one of these in an RV. So we used to, we would spill the water bowl, we would step on it, it would spill at least, probably at least once every other day. Like we, it'd be water everywhere. Um, this thing is amazing. Tip number five, keep your dog vet records with you. All right, there's no telling when you're gonna need to present your records or if something happens to your dog and you need them. Just keep them in a filing, some, some sort of filing system in your RV or in your vehicle. So whatever you're traveling with, keep your records with you. You never know when you are going to need um, vet records. So those are my five um, tips right now for traveling with dogs full time on the road. All right. Number one, avoid asking questions in these groups because you're just going to get upset. You're going to get your heart rate up by some of the answers and some of the comments that be, these people leave. Never ask about dogs. Never ask about your truck. Lesson learned. Um, number two, um, portable dog dog crates. They're like canvas dog crates. They're linked below. Check them out. Um, an invisible fence. They are a little bit on the pricey side, but ours has come in handy a lot. Ours, ours really does come in handy. So there you go. Take it for what it's worth. I'll link that below too. And number four, spill-proof bowl. 
that's the number one thing I can recommend. Number one um, item for dogs I can recommend when you're on the road. That's spill-proof bowl. And number five, keep your vet records with you. There you have it. Those are my five tips for traveling with animals when you are full-timing in an RV, or at least dogs, when you're traveling full-time with dogs. If you have any questions, please comment below. And tell me, what do you recommend for traveling with dogs when you're on the road? Let me know. And if you don't agree with me, let me know that too. Just comment below. And uh, if this is your first time tuning in to the Freedom Calling RV show, then go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and then there should be a little bell icon, and then you'll get notified every time that we publish a video. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Take care.